dear students, welcome to the lecture series on geography. Today we are discussing on the topic major gene centers. You people heard about genes. In simple words, genes are the working subunits of DNA. It is a very minute structure that no one can see it with bare eyes. Regardless to its minute size, genes play an important role in all features of living things. A gene also has its role in diversity of plants and animals on the earth. Therefore, the topic can be studied under the following headings. Concept of gene centers, importance of gene pools and biodiversity, major gene pool centers of the world, mega diverse countries and causes of loss of gene pool. To begin with, we should understand the concept of gene centers. The geographic centers of the genetic diversity of cultivated plants. The concept arose in connection with the need for new planting material in selecting and improving cultivated plant varieties. It is based on Darwin's belief in the existence of geographic centers of origin of biological species. The species we know today have their origins at different times in the history of the earth. The origin of most of this diversity goes back to geological times and to events and causes of various kinds such as continental drift, the dispersion and isolation of flora and fauna and the genetics of species and their adaptation to different environments. These phenomena gave rise to the particular flora and fauna of the continents today. The terms center of origin and center of diversity have been used interchangeably. Though the two concepts are related and highly intertwined, there is a distinction between the two. Though the principle behind centers of origin and diversity applies to all organisms, they are most often used in relation to plants, particularly in plant breeding and studies of crop domestication. The areas where the origin or differentiation of a particular species or population took place are generally called centers of origin or gene centers. Gene pool centers are the places of origin of plants and animals for the first time. They are the regions where large scale domestication occurred in first time for particular species. The gene pool is defined as the stock of genes found in an interbreeding population. The gene pool centers refers to areas on the earth which are seen as places where important crop plants and domestic animals originated. They have an extraordinary range of wild equivalents of cultivated plant species and useful tropical plants. The total genes or genetic diversity or more recently gene pools is the variation of genes within species. It involves two aspects, various populations of the same species, for example thousands of rice varieties available in India and genetic variation within each of the population, for example high genetic variation among Indian rhinos. The total species or species diversity refer to variation of species within a region. For instance, in a specific region there may be a certain number of species of birds, a certain number of species of insects, a specific number of species of reptiles and so on. The species diversity may be identified in qualitative terms also. In terms of the taxonomic diversity, more species live on land than in sea. The diversity of the ecosystem is the species or genetic diversity of communities. Community diversity estimations of mega ecosystems 
are done at national and subnational levels to ascertain the ecosystem diversity. These species or populations dispersed and became distinguishable from others by different phenomena such as migration, geographical or reproductive isolation and mutations successively giving rise to other species and forms. In 1883, A. Dick and Dole published a work in which he established the geographic regions of origin of the principal cultivated plants. However, these regions were entire continents or other large territories. Now, we can analyze the importance of gene pool centers and biodiversity. Gene diversity is very essential because it is the soul to assure our survival. Although humans are omnivores, our largest source of energy comes from plants. Even though our 5000 species of plants have been used as source of food, less than 20 are widely consumed and less than 5 crops are essential staple food for the majority of the population. The diverse gene pool allows scientists to strengthen the narrow gene pool of these few staple crops making them more productive and resistant to diseases. The reason crop failures like the potato blight in Ireland in 1740 because is not only a result of advance in chemical agents such as pesticides but also due to the strengthening of the crops resistant to disease by adding genes from wild plants. The diverse gene pool is also necessary in making the lives of mankind healthier. Both traditional and modern medicines depend deeply on the gene pool. According to WHO, over 80% of people living in developing worlds rely on traditional medicine made from plants to cure their disease. Modern medicine also relies heavily on the diverse gene pool. For example, Anastasia, an important drug that is used all over the world, was really developed from a gene found in a certain tree frog species. Another classical example would be penicillin, which was developed from a certain type of fungus. The gene pool is essentially the raw material for the medical research. Therefore, the development of new medicine will close down without a sufficient gene pool. Species diversity also has its important role in human life by playing a significant role in agriculture. Many plants rely on other species such as birds and insects to pollinate them. More than one third of the human civilization's crops are dependent on such methods of pollination to reproduce. The diverse species also play an important role in protecting plants from pests. It is estimated that close to 99% of pests are controlled by other organisms such as insects and birds. These natural pesticides are far effective than their counterpart in that they do not harm the soil and pests do not develop resistance to them likely they do to chemical agents. Without species diversity, the human race will suffer not only a lack of genetic diversity but also a significantly detrimental effect to agriculture, its main source of energy. The gene pool centers are precious because every sphere of our life today is linked to the wild or domesticated component of biodiversity. Whether it is health, food, clothing, aesthetics, industry or sports, we use the numerous species of plants and animals life to obtain medicines as potential food sources in agriculture and in industries. Another one importance is ecosystem diversity 
is also extremely crucial to humankind. Ecosystem provides the area for species to exist and create a diverse gene pool. The diverse ecosystem allows species to exist by performing two functions acting as filters and as protective barriers against natural disasters. So, the gene pool centers and biodiversity play an important role in maintaining the life of human beings and also in fulfilling his wishes. Next, we shall move on to the major gene centers of the world. The famous Russian genetist N. I. Vavilo discovered that certain geographic regions have a wide range of wild varieties of plants whose counterparts are cultivated for use by humans. He named these regions as main centers of origin of cultivated plants or world centers of varietal diversity of cultivated plants. The gene pool centers were identified by him as South Asian tropical region with the foci being Indian, Indo-Chinese, insular including the entire Malayan archipelago. The South Asian tropical center is the native habitat of about 33% of all cultivated plants including rice, sugarcane and namely tropical and vegetable crops. Next, Southwest Asian, Caucasian, Middle East and Northwest Indian. The Southwest Asian center, the home of 4% of all cultivated plants, is the most important area of origin of crops raised in Europe, including bread grains, legumes, fruit crops and grapes. Third one is East Asian, Chinese and Japanese. The East Asian center accounts for 20% of cultivated plants including soya beans and various millets, vegetables and fruit species. Next is Mediterranean. The Mediterranean center is the place of origin of about 11% of the cultivated plant species including the olive, the carob and many feed and vegetable crops. Next one is Ethiopian. The Ethiopian center accounts for about 4% of the cultivated plants. It is characterized by a number of endemic species and genera. For example, teff, gyozot and unique species of banana and the coffee tree. It also has original cultivated endemic species and subspecies of wheat and barley. Sixth one is Central American including South Mexico, mountainous South Mexico, Central American and West Indian Insular. The Central American Center was the place of origin of about 90 food industrial and medicinal species including corn, long fiber cotton species, cocoa, several species of beans and squash and many fruit species. Next, Andean within South America including Andean, Kylonian, Orcasian and Bogatan. The Andes Center is the home of many species of tuberous plants. Above all, potatoes, oculus, nostrutium, cinchona and cocoa. Vavilo identified other areas where plants had been introduced into culture from the wild flora. In the oasis of Arabia, South Mesopotamia and Sahara, the date palm was introduced. In South Africa, regions next to the Kalahari Desert, the watermelon was introduced as a crop. In the inner tropical South America, the manioc, ananas, peanut and the caucho was introduced. And in North America, the Indians introduced topiamber and sunflower in the past. 
the plants of ancient times like hemp, sorgho and apple tree were introduced in different regions at different times. Therefore, it is not possible to localize their initial speciation and cultivation. The experts identify four centers of origin which have yielded the majority of useful plants and animals to be found in the world. They are tropical southeastern Asia which has provided rice and chickens, temperate southwestern Asia the place of origin of wheat, goats, sheep and asses, the central Andes of South America, place of origin of potatoes and guinea pigs and subtropical or temperate Mexico which has yielded corn and turkeys. Gene pool centers are usually areas of high population that were suited for moderately intense agriculture. According to another classification, most of the crop species found today originated in eight regions which are called global regions of biodiversity. Most of the regions belong to the third world. Almost every cereal, fruit, vegetable, spice, oil seed, tuber, natural dye, fiber crop, forage crop, timber tree, industrial crop, medicinal crop, beverage crop and aromatic plant is native to at least one of these regions. Those regions and their native crops are Mexico and Central America. The common species are cocoa, common bean, corn or maize, cotton, lima bean, tapri bean, tobacco and tomato. Next, Andes. The common species are corn or maize, common bean, potato, peanut and tomato. Next, Asia Minor and Mediterranean. Here, the common species are alfalfa, barley, cabbage, carrot, garlic, grape, lentil, oats, onion, pea, peo, rye and wheat. In Ethiopia, the common species are banana, barley, coffee, cowpea, onion, pea and wheat. Next is the Central Asia. Here, the common species are apple, apricot, barley, carrot, cotton, grape, lentil, onion, pea, pear and wheat. Coming to India, here the common species are cotton, cucumber, chickpea, lemon, orange, pigeon pea, rice, sorghum, soya bean, sugar cane and various grams. Next is the Southeast Asia. Here banana, orange, rice, sugar cane, China apricot, orange, rice, sugar cane, soya bean and tea. There are some countries with high diversity in genes. So coming to mega diverse countries. Some areas in our planet are richer in biodiversity than others. The mega diverse countries are a group of countries that hold more than 70% of the earth's diversity. Out of more than 200 countries, only 17 countries are listed as the mega diverse countries in the world. These countries were first introduced in 1998 and also are located in the tropical or subtropical region, this group is formed to increase the awareness for biodiversity conservation in nature with high biological diversity. Many unique species live in their specific country. Therefore, some countries have a major responsibility to protect this diversity. So, the World Conservation Monitoring Center of the UN Environment Program has been working on this issue since 1988. 
So far, it has identified 17 mega diverse countries with the highest number of endemic species, at least 5000 endemic plants. The world's top biodiversity rich continent is America with 7 mega diverse countries. This country based method raises national awareness for biodiversity conservation in nations with high biological diversity with many species unique to a specific country. This concept complements the top biodiversity hotspots and high biodiversity wilderness areas to achieve significant coverage of the world's biological resources. The diversity of each and every nation is critically important to that nation's survival and must be a fundamental component of any national or regional development strategy. Biodiversity is by no means evenly distributed on our planet and some countries, especially in the tropics, enclose far greater concentrations of biodiversity than others. Some of the richest and most diverse nations also have ecosystems that are under the most severe threat. Some of these countries formed the like-minded mega diverse countries in 2002. The 17 countries are Australia, Brazil, China, Colombia, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ecuador, India, Indonesia, Madagascar, Malaysia, Mexico, Papua New Guinea, Peru, the Philippines, South Africa, USA and Venezuela. At the Mexican resort of Cancun on February 18, 2002, Brazil, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, India, Indonesia, Kenya, Mexico, Peru, South Africa and Venezuela declared they were coming together for promoting their interests and priorities related to the preservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. India is one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world, commanding 7 to 8 percent of the world's biodiversity and supporting 16 percent of the major forest types varying from alpine pastures in the Himalayas to temperate, subtropical, tropical forest and mangroves in the coastal areas. However, the country is facing several challenges with a regard to maintaining its mega diverse status. Next, we'll move on to the causes for the loss of biodiversity. The major factors that lead to the loss of species are severe disturbance of habitats, introduction of new species, overexploitation of plant and animal species, pollution and change in global climate. Obviously, humans have played a significant hand in creating these factors. Habitat loss. With growing human population and resource consumption, the natural habitats of plants and animals has been affected in a major way. Dams have destroyed segments of rivers and affected stream habitat. Developments of coasts have eroded coral reefs and near shore communities. Huge forest areas have been cut off to make space for marginal agriculture and to get timber. All these actions lead to the habitat loss of numerous species and this will lead to the disappearance of them in future. Next, introduction of species. When new species are introduced into an area, especially by man, the native biodiversity gets affected. This is because the introduced species may be superior as competitors and it may flourish to the detriment of the native species. If the habitat is large enough or very diverse, 
existing species coexist with new ones. So, introduction of species is a threat to the gene pool unless the area has a complex biodiversity. Over exploitation of species. When humans over exploit forest, fishery and wildlife resources, species become extinct. We can find numerous such examples of species like the mammoth, the smenia wolf, passenger pigeon that are extinct today but were there in significant number in the past. Pollution. Different kinds of pollutants strain the ecosystem and many destroyed species that are sensitive. Pollutants that are added to the soil not only affect one set of organisms but the entire food chain. Heavy metals from industrial waste and salinization due to irrigated agriculture affect growth and survival of species. The burning of fossil fuels in industrial process causes acid rain containing sulfur, nitrogen and other pollutants which has destroyed vast expanse of forests. Marine pollution is a threat to fisheries resources. Global climate change. The global climate is undergoing a rapid change due to increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere as a result of harmful activities of human. There is a rise of 1 degree to 3 degree centigrade in global temperature in the 21st century. Many species may not be able to adjust to the change and may die. It is clear that the sea level that is rising due to global warming will submerge vast expanse of coastal areas, killing a variety of flora and fauna in these areas. Therefore, if the current trend of decrease in biodiversity continues, mankind will face a severe future. Development of medicine will slow down significantly and we would have to live under the constant threat of starvation due to the high susceptibility of our staple crops. In addition, natural disasters will strike harder than before because there will be little barrier to absorb their shock. Biodiversity is extremely important for our survival and is a problem that requires serious and immediate attention. Now we can summarize the session. The gene centers or centers of origin are the regions rich in plant species including large quantities of edible species and since the far past have been occupied by human populations that built up knowledge about this diversity and carried out different process to generate the variation we know today. The study of centers of origin and diversity is helpful in plant breeding and genetic research. The genetic variation in these centers often serves as a rich reserve of genetic material for the improvement of cultivated crops. Genes for disease, pest and stress resistance and nutritional quality are just some of the resources that can be found in these reserves. Thank you.